Well, the new Pro Series iPhones are now available and I'm using the iPhone 15 Pro as my main device this year and after testing, I have really started to like the phone in a lot of areas. And in that, the main thing to stress out is what Apple is actually marketing. Well, to an extent. I mean, Apple is marketing this phone basically stating about the material, which is titanium, and that's all great. But here I feel that since Apple switched to titanium frame, the main advantage is weight loss. And also since the edges of the sides have been slightly rounded, the ergonomics has improved drastically. And I will say that's one of the major upgrades that has happened this year over the last few iPhones. This is like holding an iPhone 5 vibe and I just love it. And also the phone has slightly shrunken in dimensions and here the dimension change is not that noticeable but the weight thing is. And here all of this has made me use the iPhone 15 Pro caseless. Now I am rocking a tempered glass screen guard so the screen won't pick up any scratches and till now even though I have the blue titanium phone the PVD coating is staying clean. But for sure over time there will be more scuffs and marks but about the design and build, this phone is surely a 5 out of 5 one. Now there is also another update in the design side this year, which is the replacement of the mute unmute slider with a programmable action button. This is a good update because you can literally change this button's function into anything you like with the help of shortcut option. And actually I'm happy that this only triggers a register by pressing and holding instead of a single press. Now as a functionality add-on, a single press function would have been neat but I'm pretty sure there would have been plenty of missed triggers if that option was there. And here since my variant is the regular Pro one, this button is easily accessible which is not the case if you go for the Pro Max variant. And this is another thing that has made me give the design side for the 15 Pro series a 5 out of 5. And like the design, another area that has impressed me is this ultra thin bezeled 6.1 inch OLED panel which is a 120Hz adaptive refresh display. Its resolution is sharp enough to give 460 ppi and here the display can reach a max brightness of 2000 nits when we use the phone outdoors. And overall, I love this display. To me, it's a perfect size display where it's not too big and not too small. So for watching videos, playing games or casually browsing, well, it's very enjoyable. And here the viewing angles and color accuracy is also impressive. And this barely noticeable bezel is another reason why I've opted to use the iPhone 15 Pro without a case. And here the dynamic element, well, it's what it is. And it does house the Face ID sensor, which to be frank is the best unlocking method. And since this time I've gone for the smaller Pro variant, the dynamic element reachability is not an issue, and hence it has come in handy at places. Now with iPhones, what always stands out is their performance and long-term software support, and this phone is surely shining in those departments. The processor used is Apple's A17 Pro chipset, which is a 3 nanometer chipset, and this thing just flies through task. There is literally no lag or hiccup, but the phone does get slightly warm even under moderate load. Now since I haven't been using a case, it was easily noticeable, but if you are rocking a case, you won't notice it much. And for the RAM management, well, it has been great, and also I'm pretty sure that Apple will support this phone for at least 5 years. So in the processor and support side, well, you don't have to worry about anything at all. Now the storage with this regular Pro variant starts at 128 GB, and for me it's fine, but if you're planning to keep using the phone for 3 years or so, well then I will suggest to go for at least 256 GB or something more than that. Because here that storage will come in handy. Because this phone's one of the strongest feature are these guys. I mean the cameras. There are 3 cameras at the back and the main sensor is a 48 megapixel f1.78 aperture wide camera. Then there is a 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture ultra wide camera. And also a 12 megapixel f2.8 aperture telephoto camera. And these cameras are all really good, but the best is without doubt the main sensor. And this time, I like the processing that the iPhone 15 Pro does because the output seems to be more balanced than what the iPhone 14 Pro was capturing. Let it be a nature shot or a person's click or a random anything, they all look sharp and detailed. Apple has been mentioning the focal length for different zoom ranges this time and the 120mm is only available with the Pro Max because that's the phone that gets the 5x optical zoom Tetra Prism camera. Now to be frank, I didn't miss that zoom range because here the 3x is optical zoom and in the 15 Pro Max, the 3x will be digital zoom. So if you're doubtful whether to go for the 15 Pro Max because of the new telephoto camera, I would say it's not that of a mind-blowing thing. And here with the regular 15 Pro, things are actually solid both in the photo and video side. And for videos, the 15 Pro series is the one to go for. 
you can record at 4k 60 fps and even you can do ProRes video recording with log option and since we have USB-C connected this time well you can connect an external SSD and record to it at 4k 60 fps while doing ProRes and also another thing I like while taking photos is the new portraits they seem to do better edge detection and the ability to change any photo with a subject into portrait after capturing it's a pretty neat option now if we check the front camera it's also a 12 megapixel f1.9 aperture camera and then this also takes pretty solid selfies and videos if you're into vlogging this front camera is a great one so overall the camera system is right at the top of the list for the best cameras in a smartphone well that might have been an expected thing for many but then since this is the regular pro variant many will be having concerns about the battery backup and from my usage i've been getting pretty neat battery backup if you're a moderate user you can easily get through a day and for me an average screen on time i was getting was in the four hour range now do keep in mind if you are an intense user the battery won't last a whole day and you'll surely need to plug it in between and for charging well the usb-c connector does support fast charging and with the phone you're getting only a usb-c 2 cable and with that and a 20 watt adapter i was able to fully charge from 10 percent in approximately one hour 15 minutes now the 15 pro series does support usb 3 for faster data transfer but for that you need to get the cable separately and also if you are into wireless charging MagSafe and regular wireless charging is supported and if you're getting the unit from any place other than the US well the phone will have a dedicated sim card slot and the phone does support dual sim and this time the Wi-Fi support is Wi-Fi 6e and the Bluetooth support is 5.3 and as expected 5G is supported which is sub 6 everywhere except US and you get a second generation ultra wideband chip and also thread networking is supported. And there is IP68 rating with 6 meter depth support for 30 minutes. And lastly about the speakers, well to me they sounded more richer than the speakers in the 14 Pro. And the earpiece was pretty great for voice calls if you are into it. Well that's everything about the iPhone 15 Pro and after using it, well I really like the phone a lot but what you are getting here won't be like an upgrade if you are a 14 Pro user. You will notice the less weight and better ergonomics and at times even the slightly improved photo processing and for sure the USB-C addition has its advantages but all of this is actually not that great to get the iPhone 15 Pro if you are a 14 Pro user but if you are using any iPhone below that well then this will surely feel like a great upgrade and if you are such a person who is debating about getting the 15 Pro then go for it because the experience will feel refined in almost every places except the battery if you're a heavy user and if so the pro max must be the one that you should be eyeing well that's up for this video guys hope you liked it if so like is much appreciated and if you don't want to miss future contents do subscribe too see you again in the next one till then bye